So what are braces buttons and how are they different from actual braces? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about what these buttons are, some of their uses in orthodontics, and things you should know about it during your braces journey. And if you hang around till the end of today's episode, we're gonna review four different ways that braces buttons can be used in your orthodontic journey. So let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all had an awesome week and are excited and ready for another episode. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about something that not everybody might have on their braces journey, but it's something that a lot of people might have. It's a very versatile tool that your orthodontist uses to help move teeth in specific scenarios. And if you wanna know what some of those scenarios are, well, you will in just a minute. But before I tell you about it, I need you to go down there and give this video a thumbs up, as well as hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, so you can stay up to date with more braces content. And while you're down there, check out the description box for a link out to the Braces Club. A lot of the subscribers on this channel are already members on there. And if you aren't yet, you definitely check it out. It's an awesome community, a huge support group. I hop on there and answer questions. It's really great. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So what a button is in orthodontics is it's basically something that looks like a brace, but it's not really a brace. It kind of looks like a mushroom. It, it has a little bit of an area where you could tie things to it or attach elastics to it. And it's used to hold onto a tooth very much like a brace. But the biggest difference between a button and a bracket or like a brace is the fact that the button has nothing that you could tie the wire to. There's no slot. The wire doesn't go into the, the button, but the button's used to hold onto to pull on and things like that. It's really, really useful when there's only like a little bit of the tooth structure showing or if you need to put something on the tongue side of a tooth, where a bracket might be a little bit too sharp for your tongue. The main way these things are used is if we're trying to rotate a tooth or bring a tooth down to get it so that it's in a better position so that we could put a bracket in the ideal spot for that tooth. And the way these buttons are attached to a tooth are very, very similar to how brackets are attached to a tooth. We use the same exact process. We use a little bit of etching and then we put on primer and then put the glue on the button and put it onto the tooth. We use the same blue lights, the exact same process. And if you guys wanna know more about the process, I'm gonna put a link out in this corner, as well as I'm gonna put it as the pinned comment of today's video. So if you wanna watch a video on how braces are put on, you should definitely check that out. The great thing about them though, is if there's only a little bit of tooth present, well, these buttons are really good because they're pretty small, but they can serve a really, really useful purpose. And like I said earlier in the video, the best way of showing you the purpose of these buttons is by showing you guys examples of how they can be used. So without further ado, we're gonna review four different ways that these braces buttons can be used. These aren't the only ways they can be used, but they're the most commonly used reasons, okay? So one of the main reasons these buttons can be used is to help to derotate a tooth. And if you saw my video last week, we talked about impacted canines, and the first example is a case of an impacted canine. A lot of the times, these canines come down and they come out kind of rotated. So it's really hard to put a bracket on it, so if we wanna derotate this tooth, what we can do is put a button on one side of the canine and a button on the other side of the canine, and then we could put forces in equal and opposite directions to help derotate that tooth. In this case, you can see that this is the area that should be facing the cheek, but it's pointing the wrong direction. So basically what we did is we used these power chains to derotate the tooth and bring it into a more accurate position so that when we put a bracket or a brace on that tooth, it could be brought into its ideal position. Because if you can imagine, if we just grabbed it from one side, it might not be as well controlled, but if you grab it from both ends and twist that tooth, it's a really good and well controlled way of derotating a tooth that needs to be rotated. So that's one way buttons could be used. They're really, really good at serving as handlebars to derotate a tooth. Another way that it could be used is if we wanna bring a tooth forward. So in this case, this patient had these lateral incisors that were a little bit further back than the rest of the teeth. So what I did is I used the thing called an open coil spring to make room for these incisors. And then we put buttons on the lateral incisors. And if you guys remember how these power chains work, the power chains wanted to return to its original shape. So it's bringing that tooth forward and the open coil spring is there to prevent the space from being closed. So it's a really cool combination of a bunch of mechanics here. We made it so that we have enough room to bring that lateral incisor in and we use buttons to help derotate it and bring it into its ideal position. So the coil springs make sure that the room doesn't get lost and the power chain helps bring that tooth forward to its ideal position. Now, once it's closer to being in that ideal position, we could change these buttons out, take them off and put a brace on that tooth. And then we can use a normal nickel titanium wire to bring that tooth into its ideal spot. So really, really cool case that we can use a bunch of different mechanics as well as buttons to bring that tooth to its ideal spot. The main reason why we didn't just put a brace on that tooth and line up all the teeth is whenever you put a force on a tooth, there's always an equal and opposite reaction, right? So if I was to run a wire just across all these teeth, 
those front teeth that are in a really good spot right now, they tend to lean back. So that's why I had a main wire on there to hold the position of those teeth. And we use these buttons and power chains to bring that tooth forward without too much of a side effect on all the other teeth. Very, very similar case with our third scenario here. So our patient here had a buckly impacted canine. So this is a canine that was impacted on the cheek side or the lip side, right? So we used an open coil spring to make room for this tooth. And then what we did is we did a little bit of a laser surgery. I went in there and I used a laser to make a little bit of a hole and we put a button. And the reason I used a button is because I didn't want to open up too much. You know, I want to make a little, little tiny surgical site. If I wanted to make a little bit bigger site, I could have put a brace on it right away. But what we did is we put on a button and then I don't have a photo of it here, but what I did was I ran a second wire up and over that tooth and it slowly brought that down without all the other teeth going up. Because if you guys remember, everything in braces is a tug of war, right? So if I was to just bring a force on that tooth to come down, all the other teeth might go up a little bit, but I liked where all the other teeth were. So I wanted to maintain that position and basically use the one main wire with that open coil spring to maintain all the other teeth and then we used a button with a second wire to slowly bring that canine down into its ideal spot. Now, once it's closer, we could change that button out for a bracket, line up all the teeth, and we're good to go. And the fourth scenario that I've used these buttons is in a case where we wanna do Invisalign and we wanna run rubber bands, okay? Now, this isn't a photo in the patient's mouth because I didn't take a photo in the mouth, but what we could do sometimes with Invisalign is we can make it so that the trays are cut out. And this little cutout makes a perfect little spot where I can attach a button. And the button on that tooth can be used to run rubber bands. So let's say you have an overbite or an underbite. Well, these buttons can be used to attach rubber bands and correct these overbite and underbites by using elastics with your Invisalign. It's a common misconception that bites can't be fixed with aligners, but that's not true. Under the right care with an orthodontist and understanding the mechanics, if we use proper mechanics, we can actually correct overbites, underbites, deep bites, all these different types of bites by using clear aligners. And I'm happy to talk about that in another video if you guys are interested. But in a case like this, we basically designed the aligners to have a little bit of a cutout so that the button can go right into that perfect spot and we can run elastics from the buttons either on one arch or two arches or things like that. Now, these aren't all the ways that buttons can be used in orthodontics. There's a bunch of different ways and it really comes down to your orthodontist discretion. It might be used in a number of different ways that I can't even go into them all in this video. But these are the, some of the ways that I like to use them and I love to use them when they're necessary. They're a fantastic tool and I really enjoy working with them. If you guys have buttons in your mouth, let me know in the comments of today's video. And if you guys have any questions of what I'm talking about, please let me know down there. I love answering you guys' questions and I actually will pick some of them and bring them up to talk about on our YouTube Live this upcoming Wednesday. So if you guys don't know already, we have a live every single Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. So if you haven't checked out one of those yet, I highly encourage it. The replays are always available, but it's more fun to be there live and asking questions and engaging. It's always a great time. But that's all I pretty much have for you guys regarding buttons and orthodontics. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to go down there and destroy that thumbs up button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will catch you guys next week on another episode of Braces Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg, out.